Patch 12.14 had some major changes, which resulted in a new meta. In this video, I'll cover my tier list and strategy for climbing on this patch for both solo ranked and double up. Then, I'll cover how to play all the comps mentioned. For the first time this set, there was no hotfix after the patch, but the meta is far from balanced. Let's first take a look at my tier list for solo ranked. Astral Aesol is a bit hard to hit, but if you do, then you're in a great spot to first place. Aesol is probably the strongest champion in the late game right now, so if you hit him late game, you will win the game a lot of the time. Jade and Nivea is the best comp to get a top 4 with on this patch. You can easily roll at level 6 and 7, which allows you to play it from behind. And you can also get top 2's late game if you hit a Nivea 3 star. Corky is a weird one. It's the strongest comp in the game until others get their 10 costs and 3 cost 3 stars online. It's the only 4 cost carry comp in the meta right now, but it's still a 4 cost, so it falls off too hard in the late game which holds it back from being S tier. Ao Shin is still a very powerful late game carry, but he is weaker than Aesol. You still want to play it if you hit, and you will still do very well with it, but overall you prefer Aesol over him instead. Ryze is still a good comp, but you have to hit 3 star Ryze, Silas, and Zoe late game to get higher than a top 4. Additionally, it's better to pivot into Aesol than to chase the 3 star Ryze. Shivana is a fantastic late game carry like Aesol and Ao Shin. Getting there is the hard part though. If you are able to hit Shivana, you will top 4 in a lot of cases, and if you get her 2 starred, you're able to top 2 and occasionally win with her as well. Mirage Deja has the same strengths and weaknesses as Corky. It's very powerful until others get their 10 costs and 3 star 3 costs online. Overall a good comp to get top 4s with, but it's not strong enough to win games with this. Whisper Elise is a little too hard to play with the nerfs, and the comp has the same story as most other non-10 cost carry comps. You'll get top 4s if you hit, but this comp can also be in 8th place without 3 star Elise. Cava Legends is still strong and consistent, but usually not strong enough to win games. You will get a lot of top 4s with this if you hit, and you will rarely go lower than the 6th place. So it's consistent, but it gets overpowered by the 10 cost late game. Bears got gutted this patch. He was the best top 4 comp in the game last patch, and this patch is just a decent top 4 comp. You will rarely get higher than a top 4, which holds it back from being any higher than B tier. Trainer Reroll is a weaker version of Corky unless you hit 4 star Nomsi really early, so you only play this occasionally with the right opener. Looking at my double up tier list, it is very similar, but there are generally less playable comps. Since you hit everything faster in double up, any comp that runs 10 cost carries are the strongest. 4 and 3 cost comps are still playable, but significantly weaker as you get outscaled faster in this mode. If there is a comp I did not mention here in any of the tier lists, it's a comp that is in C tier or lower. Now moving on to my strategy for climbing on this patch, and first let's cover solo ranked. If we look at the meta, you either flex around AP comps like Jades or Tankos, or if you get 80 items you play for Corky. Because of this, I start Rod or Belt on the first carousel. Rod is there as I'd like to AP flex so I'm not trapped into Corky, and the Belt is there as it builds into Morello, which most AP carries you as well, and it also builds into other tank items in case I want to play other comps. If I could pick a comp to play every game, it would be Aesol, so if I get an early Ryze or Lilia and I have AP items, I will default into that comp. The opener in that case wants to be this, so I always pick up Astral units if I get one of those early. I'm also fine to play Jades if I get them early, and you can still pivot into Aesol or other 10 cost dragons by using any other AP item holders, as all three of them want AP items. Because of this, I always try to fast 8 whenever I can, and I'm overall more greedy with my goal to make sure I get there and have the chance of hitting a 10 cost dragon. Additionally, Bart is higher value on this patch as he allows you to get higher odds for legendaries, which increases the chances for a 2 star 10 cost dragon. The meta is not very balanced, so you always want to default towards the S tier comps and play A tier comps if you have good openers for them, and play the occasional B tier comps when the setup is fantastic for it. The strategy in double up is similar as the tier list is similar, but you always want to have one if not both players defaulting towards Aesol. If both players are greedy and fast aiding, then you have double the chance of hitting Aesol and other 10 cost dragons while rolling, and those are what you need to win games in double up. Therefore, be very greedy with your orange sender and use the blue sender to give your teammate a power spike if you hit an early 3 cost that would give them a large power spike. You can also both play 3 cost reroll to hit faster, but generally, you will get outscaled and you won't get much higher than a second place if you do this. Now let's talk about all the comps mentioned. I have made in-depth guides on a lot of these, and more are on the way, so if you want to learn about any of these comps, make sure to subscribe to the channel. First up is Astral Aesol. With this comp, you have to at least fast 8 since we're playing around a legendary SR carry. You prefer to play Astral's early for the additional gold and to also get 2 stars early. Additionally, you want to go for Nami and Alawi 3 star as well, although it's not a necessity. You run Ryze or Lilia carry until you hit Aesol, but playing other 10 cost dragons with those items until you hit Aesol also works. As for augments, you want any Econ Augment to get to level 8 faster, 
and Mage Emblem is huge on ASOL, so taking Spats or Mage Crest is great, and damage augments like Blue Battery or Jewel Lotus are also fantastic. Next up is Jade Anivia. You want to get to level 8 with this board. We don't run 9 Jades as we need Evokers for Anivia, and in this magic damage heavy meta, Mystics are very high value. We fast 8 with this comp as we have a lot of great legendaries to add in like Soraka, Bard, and Yasuo, but we can easily roll level 7 with this comp. Once you level to 8, roll for 3 star Anivia and 2 star everything else. Throw AP items on Anivia, mana generating items are not mandatory with Evokers, tank items go on Nico after that, and then 80 items on Shioyu in the very late game. The best augments are Blue Battery to make Anivia cast more often, damage augments like Ascension, and other augments to buff up Jades are also great. Next up is Corky. You want to fast aid with this comp to hit 2 star Idis and Corky. Items on Corky are Last Whisper and Giant Slayer, and then the third item is a healing or another damage item. Throw any tank items on Idas, although Stoneplate is the best one. The best augments are anything to do with Cannoneer or Rebels, and Stat United is fantastic as you have many traits active in that comp. Next up is Tempest Aoshin. This is mostly a high roll comp that you can only play if you're windstreaking throughout most of the game. Items for Aoshin is Sojin, and then a healing item which is BT Gumblade or Hodge, and a damage item which is usually Archangels. As for augments, you want economy augments, besides that, anything that gets you more tankiness. Next up is Rise. You want to slow roll at level 7 for Silas, Elawi, Nami, and Rise 3 star. Items for Rise is Sojin, Archangels, and Gumblade. As for augments, anything to do with mages are great, and Jewel Lotus or other damage augments are fantastic, and healing augments are also great as you can drop Gumblade for another damage or mana item in that case. Next up is Shivana. You play 6 Ragewing and 4 Shapeshifters, although you can go for 6 Shapeshifters or 9 Ragewing depending on your augments. Items for Shivana are full AP items. We get healing through Ragewing, so we don't need that. You can also replace one of the damage items with a tank item, but full damage on Shivana is overall better in most cases. The best augments are anything that buffs up Ragewing or Shapeshifters, and economy augments like AFK are also great to hit level 8 and 9 faster for Shivana. Next up is Mirage Deja. With this comp, you want to ideally fast 8, as you want a forecast and a legendary with Yasuo. Items for Deja is either Rageblade or a damage item, Giant Slayer to get through tanks, and then a third damage item like JG, Deathcap, or Archangels. Throw tank items on Nunu, in late game throw the rest of your items on Yasuo once you hit him. Chase 3 star Nunu in the late game as that is a solid win condition. Any healing augments are also great to give Deja a little bit of healing, or anything to buff up Cavaliers or Mirage is also great. Next up is Whisper Elise. With this comp, you want to fast date for Nico and Siphon, and then roll for 3 star Elise. Items for her are Rageblade and QSS, and then you go for either Giant Slayer or BT as the last item. The best augments are anything to buff up Shapeshifters or Whisper, and healing augments are also great in cases where you drop BT. Next up, we have Cabal Legends. You slow roll at level 7 with this board, minus 1 Cavalier, and then play any other Dragon Masters until you hit Yasuo. Once you hit 3 star Volibear, level up to 8 and play this board. You want to keep chasing 3 star Anivia here. Items for Volibear are Rageblade, QSS, and BT. Throw your tank items on Orn and AP items on Anivia. You can also throw 80 items on Yasuo late game. The best augments are anything to buff up Cavaliers, Electro Charge, and First Aid Kit is great to heal Volibear up. Next up is Varus. This comp wants to slow roll at level 7 for 3 star Varus and 3 star Elawi. Items for Varus are Rageblade, then pick 2 of Deathblade, Hurricane, Hodge, or Giant Slayer. In most lobbies, you won't need Hodge, and if you got a healing augment, that is usually enough to drop Hodge. Throw your tank items on Elawi, and the best augments are anything to buff up Swiss Shots and healing augments. Next up is Trainer Reroll. Only play this if you have a lot of trainers earlier to hit 4 star Namsi fast. You slow roll at level 6 with this board minus a Sona and Corky. Go for 3 star Tristana, Braum, Thresh, and Lulu. If you don't hit Braum, replace him and Thresh with Ida's later. Items for Tristana are the same as for Corky. Last Whisper and Deathblade are the best. And then a healing or damage item as the third one. Like I mentioned earlier, I will make in-depth guides on most of these, so comment and let me know which ones you want me to make next. I will also link my Set 7 comp playlist in the description so you can check out the ones I've already made. All the comps mentioned in this video will be linked in an Imgur album that is available on my Discord server in the hashtag TFT resources to improve text channel, and the invite link to that server is down in the description. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets of any of my comp guides, they are available for YouTube members and patrons. Link to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord we got over 9000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.